down there. And she was met with a happy American who was filling her head full of nonsense about flying saucers. Obviously, they wanted Jenny to think they had captured a flying saucer. Some conspiracies are to hide covert military operations. Others are just to make people cover up the activities they don't wish other people to know. And it's quite life in all aspects of ufology. Even UFO groups conspire against others. We don't know why, we're all after the same thing, information. But the conspiracies this morning, which uh, Mr. Matthew Williams is about to discuss, is a conspiracy in the Freemasonry and the civil services. Uh, we should look forward to this lecture and see how these conspiracies can work and how they can affect us. Uh, Matthew, by the way, has had an unfortunate incident. He had his car towed away yesterday. Uh, we're investigating the matter and we shall keep an update. But in the meantime, uh, give him a round of applause and uh, a little bit of sympathy because it's not very nice to give a lecture and all your notes have been lost. He's having to work off the cuff, as it may. So would you please give a warm welcome to Matthew Williams. Can you hear me up the back? Can you hear me up the back? Um, if you can't, just sort of say, stop me and say, and I'll turn this thing up by here. Let me just bring this up onto the stage because it would be easier for me to... Because I lost my notes, I had lots of visual images which would have helped me, and um, I'm determined to show you some of this stuff, so I'm going to draw it. So this is going to be my Rolf Harris impression now. <laughs> right. Because a lot of what I'm going to tell you today will have... Uh, significance with symbols and getting you to understand some of the symbols that the Freemasons use um, obviously if I draw them you know it would be the same then as uh, if I was to show you the OHPs which I haven't got um, right. okay I think if I bring this up as well so what? I'm so tall I can't work to that table level I'm hunched over it otherwise Right, I'll give you a little bit of introduction as to uh, who I am first. Uh, my name is Matthew Williams. I've been investigating the subject of UFOs, conspiracies, the paranormal since 1991 when I had my own UFO sighting. Um, prior to that time, I wasn't interested in the subject of UFOs and the paranormal. I was on a pretty normal life course. I was um, interested in uh, you know, driving around fast in cars like you know, some youngsters do and uh, basically causing trouble and I was quite rebellious and you know I was just into having a bit of fun on the weekends getting drunk all the usual things and the last thing that was ever on my mind was to drive across a mountain road and see a UFO one night as I did but um, after seeing this it uh, changed my life and I went on a sort of voyage of uh, trying to find out a voyage of discovery trying to find out more about these subjects not really understanding what I'd seen and how to frame this and where it fitted into a lot of other things, I basically uh, asked a lot of questions, met a lot of people, and my old life ceased. 1991 was a very life-altering year for me, the biggest change in my life that I've ever had. Um, I must say that my eyes were opened to a whole new set of things that I'm glad I now know, but in some senses, would have it would have been a lot of it would have been an easier life not to know these things. In some senses, I, I think that people do live in bliss in their ignorance. They don't know exactly the way society works, or maybe people have an inkling, but they don't want to believe the sinister aspect that could be behind some things. Um, with respect to the UFOs, there is a possibility for there being life out there in the universe, which uh, I think is an exciting possibility um, to find that we're not alone in the universe. I now believe we're, we're definitely not alone for a number of reasons. Um, I've, I've come to believe in life after death um, through personal experiences with uh, mediums, clairvoyants. I've seen ghosts and I also have a, now a firm belief in there being a higher power out there. Um, now I know there's, there's diverse opinions being expressed here today, um, so well yesterday, in so much as numerology taking uh, life path decisions 
and uh, um, we've also heard that uh, there's a possibility that we live on multiple timelines. Well, I believe in all of those things. I believe in, in that and, and much more. I believe that uh, we have the power to change our destiny. And I believe that some people, a, a certain group of people in society, have knowledge of how to change your destiny on a very radical, in a very radical way, a very radical level. And these secrets are given to members of the societies like the Freemasons at the highest levels, not the lowest levels, but at the highest levels, and that this is what the secrets are that are kept by the Freemasons. Um, I, I believe that th this stuff has been known about for thousands of years. This is no news to mankind, but because of uh, religion, which is nothing but a control mechanism for people. It's just a way of herding people into a particular behavior pattern and uh, religion has taken away from people their right to connect at a deeper level with their spiritual sides, um, with the uh, ability to use magic, which is not a negative thing. You know, magic can be used for good, magic can be used for bad. I've had personal experience of the use of magic, real magic, I believe real magic, and unless I'm deluding myself, there are people out there who can use this stuff and are using it today. And I believe, from my research, that this is where the Freemasons start their, their road to knowledge. Is, is a sort of, you start in the Freemasons at the lowest levels, you rise through the ranks, and eventually, if you get high enough, you'll be told some of these secrets. But um, what I'd like to ask people today is, um, how, how many of you know anything about the Freemasons, or do you just know the name of the Freemasons? How many know a lot about the Freemasons? Not many people here. How many people know how many Freemasons there are in the UK? Five hundred thousand. Do we have any offers on five hundred thousand? You think all the police forces are much more? Yeah. Any other any other offers? Okay. Well, he's the only bidder, so he's the only bidder, so I have to give it to him. You're out by half. There's a million Freemasons in the UK. So it's quite a high figure. How many people live in the UK? 58 million. 58? Well, I don't know, because I've heard different figures. I mean, because it, I suppose that's registered. There's people we don't know, you know, that aren't registered and stuff. I mean, I, the figure I was told was about 68 million people living in the UK at the moment. So, okay. Take out of that maybe um, sort of 20 million, let's say, um, 20 million people who are male of the correct age to enter the Freemasons. This is my estimate on, on uh, uh, sort of uh, the, the figures. Um, so you've got males eligible age to join the Freemasons and you've got about 20 million of them. That's one in 20 males. It's one in 20 people that could be in this room. Obviously you can't include children because you have to be 21 to join the organization. And uh, people who generally are, are too old and infirm to, to still attend meetings, you know, they, they are classed as still being Freemasons, but, um, I mean, we could say about one in 20. And uh, when you join the organization, you join it for life. And you can be ejected from the Freemasons, you can be shunned, but generally you are held as being a Freemason. So you are still on the records as being a Freemason. But I've not heard of any cases where Freemasons have actually been ejected and removed from being the title of being a Freemason, but um, that's quite a high figure, I think, 1 in 20. When you consider that you walk down the street and you pass 1 in 20 people, then one of them is a Freemason. So there, there's a secret body of people in society who are part of an organization which people know very little about. Some people have heard that it's bad. Some people may have heard that it does a lot of work for charity. Some people think that it's connected with the police force and a lot of police are involved and perhaps judges and but there's a little bit of corruption goes on and some people think that it's just a bunch of guys that go down the golf club on the weekends and it's just a drinking buddies club and it's a good way to get away from the wife because women aren't allowed in the Freemasons well they are actually now that's changed but uh, women have started their own Freemasonic Lodge um, it's not exactly ratified and accepted by the uh, the main lodge but uh, they've started their own lodge so women Freemasons are out there now as well um, but whatever you think about the Freemasons, I think the, the, the point I would like to make, if anything, is that people 
should make themselves more aware of what this organization is and what its power <coughs> is. Because the people who naturally gravitate towards the Freemasons, or if they, if they have a particular type of job in, in certain strata of society, managerial positions, owning of businesses, earn a certain, over a certain amount of money, professional people, doctors, solicitors, judges, all these people are the types of persons that the Freemasons like to attract. So if they do not approach the Freemasons on their own to join the organization, maybe because their friends are part of the organization and they approach them because they want to be part, because their friends are, or whether the Freemasons actually approach them, which sometimes does happen, to join, and that may be because they can help them in a monetary sense, or maybe because they think they're the right type of person, they have the right type of nature that would fit into their group. Um, whether that is what you think or not, I think that, the, uh, sorry, whether that's your experience or not, I think that because the Freemasons hold so much sway in our society, we should be looking more now at what they do. Um, the, there are about six million Freemasons in the United States, but in the United States there are also a lot of other secret society bodies which don't come under the direct lineage or control of the Freemasons, but may have similar ideas. But there are a lot more secret societies, but in the, in the United States there's six million Freemasons. And um, Freemasons are very open about who they allow to join in respect of they do not mind people of different uh, sort of races. They don't mind people of different colored skins. They're very open to all sorts of people. It's not a racist organization. And they're very clear about this. And, and everything I, I see tells me that the, the, the Freemasons are actually very good along this line. Anyone can join. And there's, a, there's an interesting point behind this. In a, in a Freemasons video, which I managed to get hold of, which is a public information video, which the Freemasons commissioned a number of years ago, uh, to take away the public's fear about what the Freemasons were, they commissioned their own video. And in this video, it stated that uh, the Freemasons liked to get people from all walks of society, all backgrounds, all religions, all colours, all faiths, whatever, to join the Freemasons. Now. This is interesting because the Freemasons are a religious order. They don't like to talk about this and they will not publicly acknowledge it. In fact, in this very same video, it was stated that the Freemasons are not interested in matters of religion. And in fact, religious discussion is banned from Freemasonic meetings. Now, take that very you know, seriously now. They're not allowed to talk about matters of religion in Freemasonic meetings, but they swear all their ceremonies in